What's going on everyone? Bobo Mac here for Crisis in the Toyverse. That's right. You are hearing me via audio instead of hearing me via YouTube. Now the reason that we are doing an audio podcast is so from time to time I'm going to be doing interviews with people in the toy community, be it those who create toys, those who review toys, and those who really just enjoy toys. So this is something a little different. It's not going to be a full-time thing. This is going to be more supplement, if you will. So on today's debut episode, I'm talking with Zacho from Diamond Select Toys, and we're going to be covering everything that went down at San Diego Comic-Con. Now, I recorded this last week during my lunch at work, so I only had an hour to work with, but Zach was gracious enough to give me his time and share all the fun stuff that was San Diego Comic-Con and a lot of cool and amazing toy products that will be coming out in the near future. So, guys, you know Diamond Select's a huge, huge friend of the show and I definitely appreciate all the stuff they do for us. So without further ado, let's go to that interview right now. And uh, I'll talk to you guys towards the end of this. Thanks so much. Zach, thank you so much for being here. I know you've had such a crazy, hectic schedule as of late. I know everything happened with San Diego and you guys just trucking forward. How are you recovering from everything that was SDECC? Oh, uh, you know, real good. It was, uh, it was a great show. Um, you know, I get a, I get a chance to blow off steam at night. You know, we'll go out and get some dinner together as a, as a team. And so every day I have a little bit of decompression. Um, but, uh, you know, once you get back, you know, you gotta, you gotta catch up on all the emails. You gotta see what you missed. You gotta, you know, uh, approve packaging and, uh, all sorts of different things. So, um, you know, a lot piles up, but I think I finally dug myself out. And uh, I think my, my family has finally forgiven me for being away for a full week. Um, so I got that going for me. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm back. You know, you've been asking me if I'm back. Yeah, I think I'm back. Well, hey, being back's not a bad thing. Um, Little John is, it sa- <laughs> is it safe to say that doing the conventions and all that to me, when I cover events and stuff, it always reminds me of, I guess, like the carnival circus life in a way. You're just going from one town to the next. <laughs> I'm sure there are lots of companies that uh, that do, you know, that that sort of tour, and other toy companies as well. I haven't paid too close attention to to how um, you know how many shows different different companies do, but we only do four, and they're pretty well spaced out um, and. And, uh, you know, they're all pretty different from each other. I mean, New York Comic Con is in October, and that's very similar to San Diego. Um, obviously, very different town, but uh, it's, you know, it's a big, busy show. C2E2 in Chicago, that's in the spring, and that's, that's a, it, it used to be a much quieter show, and it's actually starting to really grow. So it's getting to be up there uh, with the other two. Um, and then we do New York Toy Fair in, um, in the winter, in February, and that's, that's very different because it's, um, it's for uh, press. And for retailers um, and license so licensors, you know, people come by and make deals with us. But um, it's not for fans, so there aren't. Uh, it's it's in a different, whole different, um, you know, thing that you're trying to do there. Um, obviously, you're trying to get the word out to people. And I take press appointments at the other shows too. But we're not necessarily selling anything. Um, you know, we're not manning a cash register, um, which is what we do to to you know pay for the other convention we go to. So it's it's a different show, but it we luckily we have a nice break of a, a month or two or even three in between most of the shows we do. Well, that's good. Well, that's good. I mean, at least it isn't as hectic as it seems. Because I just I go, man, these guys, you guys are always everywhere, and I know a lot of the other big companies are too. It just seems, you know, but maybe I just have tunnel vision. I just think, oh yeah, you know, the next show's like uh, New York Comic Con. That's right around the corner. Well, in terms of planning, yeah, I mean, we need that. We we start planning the next show right as soon as we get back. Sometimes we have to start planning it before before the next one, the first one happens, and that that can that's when it really throws me off. I'm like, I need to be, I I needed to be planning stuff for New York before San Diego even happened, and uh, um, 
you know, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the best planner. So I'm, I'm, I'm always, uh, I'm always struggling with my timelines, but, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely seems like it's coming up a lot faster. It's only what two months away. So that's, yeah, uh, right it's pretty soon, there. pretty soon. Absolutely. Oh, I meant to ask you, uh, how did, uh, you guys had like a, a special event going on off site from San Diego this year. It was like a little get together thing. I remember seeing that in my Twitter feed. Yeah, we had, uh, um, we've done this before. We take over a, uh, a restaurant, uh, that's in the gas lamp district of San Diego. It's called taste and thirst. It's uh, if you're ever in San Diego, it's really good wings and it's a bar and it's, uh, they got good burgers and we, we sort of take it over, we skin it like, um, you know, we put up big banners when we took it over once we did it for, um, we did it all for aliens once. It was very alien themed. Um, uh, other times we've just done sort of a general DST lounge sort of theme. And it's just, uh, you know, we, we put up a lot of graphics of our products and we have, you know, our products on display there, like on the tables or in display cases and, and, uh, yeah, it's you know we 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 give coupons away at the booth and you know tell people to check it out and uh, we'll throw a little event there for um, like a little reception for press and uh, and you know again retailers and licensors and stuff like that. So it's just a fun little place for us to go. Sometimes we'll even go there and get dinner on a night where we're not having that reception. We'll just go there because it's just good food and they're open really late. Um, but the, yeah, that's that's something that we've we've done. Gosh, like three or four out of the last five years. Um, possibly longer but it's uh it's a uh, it's it's become somewhat of a tradition uh that, that's yeah. cool i i i thought that was very cool i i'd seen it seen you guys promote it before i just i don't know why it just stuck out this year in my mind so i figured i'd uh touch base on that and whatnot um let's see here when it came well not when it came but what would you say was your favorite thing to talk about this year at san diego like reveal wise that you guys are offering mm, reveal wise um gosh uh we had a lot of people reacting very positively to the john wick stuff we showed um because i think this was the first san diego we actually showed john wick we had something at um c2e2 c2e2 in the spring um mm -hmm. our first um our first diorama uh that we're doing our pvcs the galleries um and then this show, San Diego, we had another gallery and then also um, the action figure. And um, we're about to solicit that, too. We're about to t open pre-orders up for that um, later on this month. So you'll be able to pre-order that pretty soon. And the reaction to it, um, you know, uh, on the, the booth. And there's a lot of stuff in the booth. But the reaction to that was pretty, pretty strong, um, pretty positive, And a lot of people were really excited about it. Um, there's also a pretty, I liked talking about the Star Trek stuff we had on display just cause it's been a long time since we've had anything new on display for Star Trek. Um, and Star Trek fans know that and they don't cease to remind us of it, but, uh, <laughs> we, we want to, we want to make Star Trek stuff. So we've been working on a lot of different things. Um, and we showed off three new action figures and one new ship at the show and pre-orders are already open for the first two figures, which are, um, uh, based on the new Star Trek movies, the 2008 uh, movie. Actually, this one's this. These are based on Star Trek Into Darkness. The costumes are slightly different between the movies. And um, next month, later this month, you'll be able to pre-order the Borg, which is um, we've been talking about for a while. But it's a fully interchangeable, customizable Borg figure, um, which is something we've never really been able. Nobody's ever really done anything like that. A fully interchange, customizable, interchangeable one. But even we have been. Um, you know, trying to get more Borg figures out there for a while. Um, we had a whole wave of, of Borg themed figures that just didn't get the orders towards the end of our previous, you know, our initial Star Trek line. Um, and a lot of people are upset about that, but now hopefully they like this one. Um, I think it's pretty cool. No, I, I, I saw video coverage of all that stuff and, uh, the Star Trek stuff looked cool. I mean, you guys added in a black, like, I guess, laser blast effects. If you set the proper term. Um, yeah yeah they're like energy energy effects for the phasers for the uh for the star trek um the into darkness stuff i don't know i don't think we're doing it for the borg but he'll have like alternate you know weapon arms and eye pieces and a different head i think one of the heads is human and one is klingon but yeah there's a lot of accessories you know well, phasers and phaser rifles and um a couple of bridge bait bridge piece diorama bases for um for the into darkness figures 
those uh, those look pretty cool. I was actually pretty excited about those. Um, the board piece, I mean, by itself, I mean, the potential there, like you said, I think's really amazing because I mean, you're going to be able to swap out, and it's it's going to be a great army builder. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Um, well, I'm sure it'll be fine because. I mean, let's be honest here. Who doesn't like Borg if you're a Star Trek fan? That was my thinking. I thought everybody loved the Borg. I mean, you know, I'm, I've been pushing for them to do a Borg ship like we do. You know, we have to make them a certain size for them to make sense for our pri the price we charge for our electronic ships. So mm -hmm. if you know two ships are really different sizes, they're going to be pretty close to the same size in, in, in our line. Um, but the Borg is obviously would be way out of scale, but it would still be a really cool electronic ship, I think. Well, I'm, come on, that cube feature, I mean, with the lights in it, oh, that, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, blinking lights all over it, you know, I mean, the sculpting on it would be crazy, because you want it to have some sort of depth, you know, not just like a flat side, but uh, to do that with any kind of depth, I imagine, would be real. I can picture how it would be done, but it would be a, would be a real challenge. And uh, but the blinking lights and maybe a little clip on miniature Enterprise or something like that, I think that could be really cool. That could be really cool. I like your thinking on that. That's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not making it. Just so everybody knows. No, that, no, I know, I know. We're I, not I, making I, it. I, I um, <laughs> anybody's just tuning in. This isn't something we're working on. It's just something I would love to see. Just because I'm, you know, I'm not a huge, the biggest Star Trek fan out there. I know there's, you know, people who are way into it, but um, I watch Next Generation a lot. I didn't watch, you know, Voyager or anything like that, but I watch Next Generation a lot, and I watch a lot of the original Star Trek. So, I, I consider myself a fan. Um, so I'm excited to show off the Star Trek stuff. That's how I kind of am. Like when I was a kid, you know, they were in the afternoons, there would be reruns of not only the original series, but then there'd be reruns of the next generation. So I would catch those as a kid in the afternoon after school. And then, uh, I would read the books at the library, like the, the old books, the like, books. Yeah. Think, like, like from the seventies or maybe even early eighties. Uh, late 70s, early 80s. So all those, there were tons of those books. I read a whole bunch of them as a kid. And then uh, I didn't really get into Deep Space Nine, but I did watch Voyager because I was, you know, I still like Star Trek. But when Voyager came on, I gave Voyager a shot and I grew to like Voyager. It was just when I never got to, I watched some Deep Space Nine, not all of it. And I watched maybe a couple episodes of Enterprise. But, uh, but the first two were, were, you know, were the ones I really liked. I'd never really read any of the Next Generation books, but I read a lot of the original series novels. And um, I read a lot of the original series uh, book adaptations by James Blish. And they were really well written, you know, um, novella forms of each episode and uh, or at least short stories. And they were really w good. So I, I, I even now I can't remember if I saw an episode or I just read the novelization of it because uh, they were so well done and very vivid. <laughs> um what you may call it i wanted to it seemed like you guys got a really great reaction to a lot of the statues you guys showed off this year I, it seemed like a lot of people were really fell in love with statues because you guys i mean from the life bus to the pvcs and everything in between like people seem to really gravitate towards that online this year it was a lot of it was a lot of what we had there. Um, you know, like we have, you know, a certain number of action figures, but really the overwhelming stuff that we have there now is is the galleries, um, which have are very popular because they're so detailed and beautiful and only forty five dollars. So so obviously those have you know really picked up. Um, and we had a lot of Marvel on display. We had a lot more DC on display, including a couple things that we were showing for the first time. We showed more um, Dark Knight's metal. Uh, based stuff from the comics, um, which I think a lot of people were surprised by, because um, there were some really great character designs in there. And then, they're um, really uh, hard. yeah. And then we did a few showed off. Uh, well, we showed off a Dark Knight Returns um, piece from the comic book, but we also showed off Dark Knight um, movie and Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises movie based uh, dioramas of um, Christian Bale's Batman, Heath Ledger as a Joker, and um, uh, Tom Hardy as Bane. And I think we're working on a Catwoman too. Don't quote me on that. But um, the, uh, the that got a pretty good response too. Um, you know, obviously there's there's been a lot of stuff for those movies, but 
we've never done anything certainly so we're we're pretty excited to to be tackling that 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 uh, that trilogy no th- those uh, th- almost every statue that i saw i was generally impressed with i'm not a big statue guy just because of the price points of statues versus like action figures and i know there's always that divide but there were two things i took away from your showings this year a you had some amazing pieces and b the price point i thought was phenomenal for somebody who wants to get into statues because there was a big range and you know but the quality between all those ranges was actually uh fairly consistent and fairly uh, awesome on all fronts oh thank you yeah i mean I've always wondered, you know, how, you know, I mean, not to say, oh, well, you know, if we make these, why would anybody ever buy a statue again? But, you know, like a $150 statue, but we also make $150 statues and we make $200 statues to make really big pieces. Um, those busts, those half scale busts we're doing, those are about 150 as well. And, you know, I've realized that there are people who, who they want that heft and that weight. I mean, there are some people who, you know, picked up uh, our one of our exclusives, like a Marvel gallery. I saw them as I watched them pick it up. I said, "Hmm, I thought it would be heavier," and then they put it back and they walked away. And it's, you know, they 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 pay by the pound, so they want to have something that's going to feel substantial to them. That's why some people see our Marvel Select figures as very, very great values because some of them are heavy as heck. Uh, you know, we have, they have to be like strapped onto the card back so they don't fall off. Um, yeah, like uh, that thing in Abomination and Juggernaut. Yeah. Juggernaut. We have like plastic ties <laughs> holding the blister card onto the cardboard because they're they're ridiculously heavy. Um, but that's that's a lot of people find value in weight, and I'm not I'm not um, you know discounting that at all. That's if that's if that's something that's important to you, then then that's great. But you know, the heavier it is, you know, the there's more costs associated with that, and the material is uh, there's costs associated with that too, and um it's uh so you know for us to be able to we do some pretty heavy pieces at 45 dollars. we our first hulk pvc was 45 and that was pretty heavy our second one i think was 50 uh the gladiator one um and that was you know and that was those are both pretty heavy pieces but you know we charge 45 dollars pretty much for any size that we do in that gallery line so somebody like x23 is going to be a lot lighter than um say you know drax or uh or you know the hulk so it's um it's a tough uh you know we try to make it we want to keep it consistent so you know maybe one you know we make less on than another but uh but we try to keep it consistent across the board we do the same thing with our busts too our resin busts um you know they one may be bigger than the other but you know we charge about sixty dollars for for all of them the regular size busts not the half scale no like i said i i definitely see a great quality there in I think that's awesome that you guys give the same amount and uh, love and detail and care to something that may be on the lower end, but just as much love and care as to something that's on the bigger end. I know like for the, like the bigger bus there, was, you guys showed that uh, Iron Man, the classic looking Iron Man with the curvature on the helmet. Yeah. And I, I forget which Iron Man that is. It, uh, but that one looked really, really beautiful. Yeah, I don't know what uh, what era you would call that. I mean, I guess it's minute Silver he stopped. Age, isn't it? Uh, I guess I guess so. I mean, it's obviously you know post uh, post his original armor, the gray, and then the gold one. And I forget if he had the nose first or if he had the nose second. I'm pretty sure he had the nose later on. So it's sometime around when he had the nose. Um, but uh, but definitely a, a classic Iron Man, uh, as opposed to a modern Iron Man. Um, and uh, yeah, no, that's a, I'm a big Iron Man fan, so that's a, I, I'm a big fan of that piece. Although we have a couple other ones that are coming out too. We just did um, we sh- we didn't show it off at the show, but we recently showed off a, a Mark One from the movies, um, the the armor where he's blasting off from escaping the cave, and uh, and it's a uh, it's a really nice piece. It's huge. That's one of our 200 to 250 pieces. And uh, it's just a really nice one. We did a nice one for, for another, another couple other miles. We did a milestone one for Civil War um, where it paired up with the Captain America. That was really cool. And we did um, a premiere collection one sculpted by Claiborne Moore, who does a lot of work for us now. 
Um, and that one came out really nice. That's talk, talk about heavy. He's like standing on cinder blocks, kind of like big slabs of of stone, and it weighs it weighs as much as a slab of stone. It's a it's a pretty heavy piece. But we've the great part is we've got all these except for Clay, who um, pretty much just does that premier sc- uh, collection scale, the one hundred and fifty dollars statue scale. Um, we have people working on all you know the same people who work on. Um, you know, one type, one level of statue, the 200, 150 to two hundred dollar level of statue. They also work on the the forty five dollar gallery PVCs. It really is just about scale and uh, and material. Um, but you know, Jean Saint Jean uh, has sculpted both scale, you know, both premieres and galleries. Um, Alejandro Pereira, um, and they're they're all designed by the same great designers too. Uh, Caesar, um, oh gosh, who else? Uh, Nelson Asensio. Um, oh, okay. another sculptor, Alterton is another great sculptor. And I think he's done stuff at both scales as well, but yeah, we've got a lot of talented people and they, you know, we try to find the right project for them, whether it's, whether it's PVC or resin or what. Definitely. Um, let's see here. Let's go back to toys for a moment. Um, I got two questions for you about Vinnie mates. So I'm going to get the first one out of the way. My girlfriend wants to know. <laughs> now she's not nearly anywhere in the same category as me as toy collecting. She kind of puts up with me doing the whole toy thing. But she wanted me to ask you, why do the Vinny mates not have a nose? And I could not give her a good answer for that. Except like, well, it's designed in the Mini Mate style, which I don't think have noses either. That is true. Uh, since they first appeared, Mini Mates have been cylindrical heads and they started in like 2002 um they still marvel mini made started in 2003 but the first ones came out in 2002 they're always cylindrical and it's hard to draw a nose on a you know flan- either you'd have to sculpt have a sculpted nose on every piece which makes it hard to print the face onto it right or or you'd have to print the nose on and it either be look it'd rather look flat if you did it kind of straight on or it would look weird if you did it to the left or to the right it would look unusual so we just eliminated them right off the bat. I wasn't around back then. I wasn't involved in the decision to eliminate noses. But um, but as far as I can tell, that's um, primarily a, a a purely technical one. But it also um, uh, you know makes them more of a, a more of a caricature or a parody of a character than you know. So you, you, don't, you don't have to worry as much about like license uh, likeness. Uh, and also, noses are really hard to capture anyway uh, in two D or three D. So. Uh, it eliminates a really major, um, majorly difficult aspect of toy production right off the bat. Um, well, yeah, well, well, see, there you go. She, she's got the answer. It doesn't bother me in any way. It, it's, <laughs> it, it hasn't stopped me, but I was like, I'll ask. Because I don't know if you've noticed, Legos also uh, do not have noses. Um, I, I, made, I made that uh, point, too, and she just kind of looked at me like a... Is a weirdo or something. I was like, well, Legos don't have noses. Like, I don't hear you talking about the great Lego nose controversy. Like, I don't know. It, I just, I told her I'd ask, so I asked. Um, I mean, um, the they were, I mean, many of them were kind of inspired by Japanese block figures like Kubrick's um, back in the day, mm-hmm. back in the early 2000s. Uh, but those were in turn inspired by Legos. So, you know, it's it's sort of a grandfathered, you know, grandfathered in concept of, of the no nose. Um, but, uh, you know, it certainly seems to be done for the same reason um, for, you know, the same reasons for all of the different lines that you're talking about. Um, but there's also a certain amount of, you know, emulating what's come before. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, you guys showed off some pretty cool new Vinnie mates. Um, I, let's see. What you said Sonic's coming in a, a special pack. You said, I, was that correct, or was that the Mini Mates side? Of- the Mini Mini Mates will be in a four pack. Um, we oh. do four packs. We do four packs a lot for Mini Mates. Um, the Mini Mates will just be individually boxed. We've only done a couple of you know two packs. You know some of the DC ones, um, but the the Sonics will be Sonic, Tails, and Eggman will be single packs. Um, we have more Kingdom Hearts ones coming. We have ones coming for the new game uh, where they look like they're in Toy Story World. Uh, so we'll have oh, those three. Oh. Those are the first three for that will be Sora and Goofy and Donald. 
Uh, we showed off more of the DC Comics ones, which I know you've been you've been working with. Um, we're doing Green Arrow, Supergirl, and Flash in their comic looks. We've done their TV looks before, but these will be comic based. Um, oh, pretty okay. pretty different, pretty distinctly different when you look at them. And um, and then uh, what other Vinny mates do we show off that were new? Um, were the the Injustice ones? The Injustice ones actually just hit this week. Um, they just arrived in stores. Um, I think I need to send you a set of those. The um, the uh, next one would be Arrow. Arrow TV series would hit next. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and that's Arrow, Black Canary, and Deathstroke. Um, so those will be next. Um, I don't, they should come out in the next couple of weeks, I think. Uh, trying to think what other ones. There's another wave of Kingdom Hearts, the Halloween Town Kingdom Hearts ones that are still in the pipeline. They haven't hit yet. Um, but uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the next one to put out. We would put out would be. I'm trying to remember if there's ones in the new. The new previews has the. By the end of the month, you'll be able to pre-order those comic-based ones. Um, and oh, then uh, we might end up doing some for Predator, some more for Predator, but we'll have to see. Gotcha. Um. I actually had a, I lied. I, I told you there were two Vinnie Mae questions. I have three. So uh, I recently picked, I know, I know, I'm a big jerk. Um, so I picked up the Dark Tower Vinnie Mates, both the Gunslinger and the Man in Black recently. Um, those will be coming up soon, folks, in reviews. Um, but I noticed that those two kind of had a bobble with their head. I don't know, but just got a bad batch or what but when i looked at the newer ones it seems like the sculpting had changed from that original from that time to some of the stuff that we got recently was that am i right in that or am i um you're you're right that there is a difference and i guess we've never talked about this before you've been doing a lot with the dc ones now our dc ones are um static uh, there's no okay. articulation on them at all but the other ones that we do for Sonic and Ghostbusters and Alien and Predator and all that, those actually have articulated necks, ball jointed necks. It's um it's purely a licensing thing, um, kind of like how you know some pops are bobbleheads, some pops aren't, some are on bases, some aren't. It's the same kind of thing. It's just a, a question of licensing. Um, so DC ones do not have articulated necks, and everybody else does. Um, gotcha. And it just gives a little bit of um you know it, it, you can. For the ones that do have the articulate head, you really can see um, it really changes up the pose, I think, personally. Uh, you can really just turning a head from one side to the other, you can the pose can mean something completely different. Um, I find me personally, I, but I, I found that too. When I uh, this past weekend, I took both the gunslinger and uh, I, well, I took the gunslinger outside and uh, I got some fun shots with him, but I noticed that. Oh, I could turn his neck. I was like, this is this is kind of nice here. I'm digging this. Yeah, no, I um, there's another one in that Dark Tower series that I think I just uh, requested for you, which is um, the Tracker creature, uh, one of the sort of inhuman characters from the movie. Uh, I forget what they call I think they're called Trackers. Um, but I, I'm sending you one of those so you can uh, pair them up with those other two. Oh, sweet. That, that will be awesome. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, let's see here uh oh i going back to sonic for a moment i, I noticed you guys were doing you said the, the son you had some pvc statues to come into gamestop was it yes yeah gamestop is going to have the first two sonic pvc statues exclusively um they'll have sonic and they'll have a tails one they're also going to have a couple of kingdom hearts pvcs as well um sora goofy pete i want to say and uh, then also a mickey and donald I believe those will all start off exclusively at GameStop. They may be available at other places after a certain period of time, but right now they're going to be exclusively at them. And if they were, they'll be exclusively there for at least six months. Those pieces are look beautiful. I, I just have to say, like, I love the, the I guess, base with the statue and of the level in the game and with the ring and stuff. When I first saw those, I think it was at Toy Fair was the first time I had seen those and, I, I, they were just, those look really wonderful. Yeah, they came out really great. Um, I think those were sculpted by uh, Steve Varner Studios. Steve Varner has been sculpting in the industry for a long time. He did, I think he did like the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, for Playmates back in the day. 
uh, oh. but he's um, he does a lot of our animated style stuff um a lot of the batman uh the animated series pieces that we've done a lot of that is um is by varner so he's uh he's definitely um one of the one of the greats in toy sculpting that well it definitely shows with that and then once you bring in the, everything else it all paints a nice beautiful little animated picture <laughs> All right, guys, before we get back to talking with Zach, I want to let you guys know we had a bit of a technical difficulty. Uh, I guess the only plus was that it didn't happen live with people listening in and whatnot. But so we had to stop it, reset up everything. So we're going to pick it back up right now, talking all things Ghostbusters with Diamond Select Toys. Enjoy, guys. So let's talk. Uh, it, w it would be rude of me not to bring up the Ghostbusters Selects. Um, before we got cut off, I was saying that the next wave hitting next week. Am I right? Or yes. Just... Ser yeah. Series eight hits on Wednesday and that's a series with, um, the next three, last three Ghostbusters, two figures, the, uh, the gray suit, Winston and Peter. And then, um, the, uh, uh, the slime blower Ray with the interchangeable possessed head. That head. It's fantastic. The fact that you guys included that in there is just amazing. No, it's a very cool piece. I, uh, I myself have bought some pink slime, uh, so I can see if I can get some good pictures of them hosing him down with it. Um, I have a whole bunch of pink slime for that purpose, too. Back when I bought a, a Winston in slime blower mode, I was like, yeah, I'm going to need some pink slime. I also got some glow in the dark slime. Let's we'll see if that comes out. I have to get a black light or something. Mm, that, that, now you got the mine working. <laughs> I, now I'm gonna have to track down some uh, glow in the dark slime. Way to go, Zach! <laughs> I'm being uh -oh. paid by the glow in the dark slime count. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, those look fantastic. It's been awesome what you guys have been doing with the Ghostbusters line. I know you hear it all the time but I'm going to say what everybody else has said. Those have been really just fantastic figures. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of the movies. So when I found out we could do these, I was like, I was pretty excited. And when I started seeing the designs, I'm like, these are, these are going to be really, really great. These are going to be the best Ghostbusters figures ever made. And I was, there's some people who didn't really, who didn't get on board with the, with the whole idea early on. But I think, I think by now people are seeing that we're, you know, we're fans and they see what we're trying to do. And the, the, the probably the thing that really did get the biggest response at uh, San Diego was probably the real Ghostbusters figures, the ones that are being done in the animated style, um, which, you know, some people were saying, hey, why didn't you do, you know, remake the Kenner figures? And it's like, well, because we want to make really, really good, real Ghostbusters figures. So, um, you know, the proportions are a little more realistic. Uh, the head sculpts are not not so realistic. They're they're you know we tried to base them on the cartoon as much as possible, but um, uh, you know I think I think when people get them in their hands, they're going to be very 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 excited by them. More excited than they seem to be right now. I I don't know about anybody else, but like I can tell you from my experience, I am so ready for those figures. Like. Uh, words can't describe it. I got somebody working on a, a containment grid right now. Really? For uh, yeah, for it. So once I get the once I start uh, getting those guys, I'm gonna have some fun photo ideas with those. Excellent! I can't wait to see them. Uh, I, well, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> no, I, but no, I think you guys have done that line justice, and it's. We've had, you know, I'm, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but, you know, Ghostbusters has had mixed results in terms of action figures in the past. But for you guys, you guys have given tons of accessories and posability, and they look good. The sculpts are good, and I just really enjoy them. And the fact that I have this big, giant tower, or not tower, but building uh, top that hangs on a shelf in my room, when I do all my reviews and pictures and stuff, I, I, you can't beat that, man. And the fact that we're at a firehouse, too, awesome. Yeah, I know a lot of people are, like, 
so what's the diorama going to be for the real Ghostbusters? And it's like, well, no, because you need to collect. We need to use 15 parts to build this thing. So you're going to have to get the Ghostbusters 2 figures and the real Ghostbusters figures if you want to build this massive firehouse doors diorama. Um, yeah, no, that, that diorama's... I am chomping to have that thing. <laughs> even I, I don't even have one myself. I get to play with it at the shows, but uh, I have yet to get them to send me all the pieces to it here at my office. So I'm like, <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta get my hands on this. I've got the first three series, of course, like everybody does, but, well, everybody will uh, next week, but, um, you know, I've still only got half a firehouse, so I gotta, I gotta do something about getting those extra pieces in. Absolutely. Um, Real quick, let's talk uh, Pacific Rim. Uh, I know you guys are doing a ton of stuff. Uh, you got that giant bust. Uh, you got the blind bag stuff. And then you guys have more uh, selects coming out in that line. Yes. Yeah, the uh, the big bust is part of that Legends in Three Dimensions line. Um, we're starting it with Deadpool, and then we're going to mix a bunch of different guys. Iron Giant. Uh, a lot of cool characters. And then um, uh, we're going to do a vinyl bank of um, of Gypsy Avenger. The big one is of Gypsy Danger, actually, from the first movie. That's the first thing we've done from the first movie. Uh, but the vinyl bank will be of Gypsy Avenger. Um, we have the, the what are they called? The Deforms, which is our new line of uh, like kind of super deformed, if you know that style. Chibi yeah, style, some people call it now. Um, the robots and the, um, and the, the kaiju. And then um, we've got the action figure. Series 2 just hit not too long ago, and Series 3 is up for pre-order now. Um, I'm not sure the exact ship date on that. Um, might be as early as fall, because um, I believe we had production samples at uh, San Diego. Another thing we had on display that um, uh, we haven't put up for pre-order yet is um, uh, one of those P gallery PVCs, uh, you know, 9 and nine, ten inch scale. Um, Gypsy Avenger, and he's standing on a cool ruined city base with like a crumbling building and stuff. It's one of the yeah, coolest yeah. gallows we've ever that, done. Uh, that, that came out really cool. Yeah, I'm excited to have that, and I want us to do more like, um, you know, destroyed building diorama stuff like that. Um, for, for if not for this line, then for just for in general, just to sell. I'd love us to just make get in the ruined building business because i think it'd be something that would have a lot of um a lot of i see a lot of people building their own you know or like you know having to get them from other other sets like um like train sets and stuff like that i don't think any there have been a lot of people making um at least certainly not in america i mean there may be some sort of something in japan uh, you know the wrecked building thing that goes good with like godzilla figures and stuff but i'd yeah, love to see yeah. that. when i bought series one of pacific rim I ran into a problem. I was like, well, all the pop-ups and dios I have, these, these are out of scale. Like, I need to find something that looks remotely, like, tech with these guys because I don't have any buildings and stuff because I really don't have figures that represent that scale well. But after I played around with them and stuff, they, I mean, they were fun with any scale. And, uh, but those, those came out really, really good. Uh, kudos to the team for uh really making a uh, affordable uh pacific rim figures that i thought uh really have their own mark that shine really good thank you thank you i i um i think they did they were those are sculpted by a company called big shot toy works i don't think we'd really worked with them previously but they've been doing a great amazing work on the on the whole range of um, pacific rim stuff and uh you know the figures are really great They're a lot of fun to play with um and uh, yeah, you know, um, I I too had that problem when I was taking pictures. I have some diorama background, like um, backdrops, paper backdrops that are like cityscapes. And I was able to use some of those, but sometimes I had to do like some creative uh, angles, like putting them on the ground in actual cities. Like I took them to Chicago and I was walking around outside the, uh, the convention <laughs> center, trying to find places to put them where they looked like they were taller than the buildings or. I had them up in my hotel room and I was like putting them in the window and making it look like they were taller than the building. And it was uh, a lot of trick photography involved, but, um, but no, I'd love to have something to make it a little bit easier. Yeah. I figure with series uh, two and onwards, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go to downtown Denver and 
go on a parking garage and figure out how to work those to have really showcase those a little better. There you go. That's definitely uh, no. If you, you can get it, if you can get on a on a on a rooftop in a city, then you're you got everything you need. Absolutely. Right. Like it was like one of those things. Funny side story, real quick. Because when you start talking about you know having the figures out in a public place, it's always interesting to see normal people's reaction to adults taking pictures of toys. <laughs> Prime example. I was in the park one day, I was taking pictures, and I was laying down, and I had my headphones on. I'm setting up this shot, and it was like, I believe, with a NECA Jason figure and some of the Diamond Select Gotham lines, because I needed human characters. Um, so I had my headphones on. Somebody called the cops. They either thought I was drunk or dead, and they brought out, like, the canine unit. Wow. So I come out off of this hill, and there's, like, three police cars, and they're like, what are you doing? And I got toys in my hand. I'm like taking pictures of my toys. Like you want to see? So I, and I show the cop on the phone. Like I'm taking pictures. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> and they were like, uh, "Oh, okay." And then they all left. I was like, and then recently I took a picture of something else. And this guy's like, "What are you doing down there?" This older guy. He looked like Dale from the Walking Dead comics. <laughs> taking pictures of my toys. Oh. That's cool, I guess. How's your day going? Start walking away from me. I was like, what? <laughs> like, why did you even ask what I was doing down here? If you, I don't know. <laughs> it's, people are strange. They've never called the cops on. Well, I have, and it was fun. <laughs> uh, I wish I'd been there just to, to watch you showing the camera full of pictures to the policeman. That would have been fantastic. See, that was the best part. Because I'm sitting there. Yeah, look at this picture. Yeah, what do you think of this? Like, And he seemed more annoyed than anything else. A, that he was out there. B, that, ah, oh, this stupid guy's playing with his toys. Like, <laughs> what am I I'd be mad at the person who called it in. I would too. But uh, what can you, I was like, eh, whatever. So, And it's weird too, because like, I'll take toys out and then there'll be a whole bunch of little kids around. And I'm like, uh, I don't need the cops called on me. It's time to just pack it up and go somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a beauty by any stretch of the imagination. So it's like, okay, you got this big guy playing with toys, and uh, there's a whole bunch of little kids around him. I don't need that type of attention in my life. <laughs> um. Great part about being in New York City is when you lie on the street and you're like doing something that nobody can tell what you're doing. They just keep walking. They don't really pay attention. <laughs> They're like, that's, that's on every block around here. Uh, I've never uh, I've never been to New York. Uh, we got invites to Toy Fair last year, but it came up so sudden, sudden. I was like, I can't make this. So I'm planning ahead. Hopefully it happens this year, but we'll see what happens. That would be great. No, if you come out, I'll definitely love to see you. Absolutely. San Diego's also San Diego's also good for taking pictures. They have a lot of people lying on the street there too. <laughs> I guess it's just oh. Colorado where they're like, wait a minute, someone's lying down somewhere on the ground. That that can't happen. Well, you know, you know. Uh, Actually, given what I know of Colorado, I would think uh, of Denver. That would be uh, that'd be a more common occurrence nowadays. You would think I'm in a suburb outside of Denver, like, you know, the suburbs in Colorado are all connected weird, but like, I, people are strange. I, I don't know. Well, we'll see what happens when I take a Pacific Rim downtown. We'll see what type of reactions I get. Yeah. Up on top of a parking garage above Colorado <laughs> with a kid taking pictures <laughs> with yeah, some sort of me metallic me. object in your hand. <laughs> What's this person doing? I'm taking pictures. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's see here. Real quick. Um, is there anything else that you uh, that's coming up that any fan of Diamond Select should be aware of? Uh, hmm. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Kingdom Hearts. Um, series three just went for pre-order and that's got, um, our Tron figures in it. Um, so you got Tron, um, you've got space paranoids version. You've got Tron, you've got Sark, 
And then you've got Space Paranoids versions, um, you know, the video game versions of Sora and Goofy and Donald. So they're all blue and white tricked out. Um, so that's pretty cool. A lot of people are really excited. Kind of like people are excited we're making the real Ghostbusters figures. They're also excited that we're making seven inch scale Tron figures, which, you know, aside from some, you know, some of the stuff from the legacy movie, um, uh, there hasn't really been anything in that scale. They made some stuff for a video game. NECA did, I think a long time ago, but, um, but it was a long time ago. Um, so it's the first time anybody's done anything that's really specifically based on the 1982 movie. So that's cool. Uh, a lot of that people are excited cool. about that. Um, oh, you guys had that mini mate bike bike for Tron too, right? Yeah, yeah, we're doing a light yeah. cycle for the for the mini mates line. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. Yeah, the Tron mini mate is actually out now in series one. Uh, he came with Donald, uh, but series two will have Sark and uh, uh, Space Paranoids Goofy, and then there's gonna be a box like a vehicle box of vehicle with uh, Space Paranoid Sora, and you can ride on it too. It's kind of like. Um, it's kind of like it's not really like the classic 82 bikes i think they're based they're more like this in the video game but um maybe maybe kind of in like in the new movie but you know you kind of kind of straddle it and um you know you lean forward into it and uh and uh it's got it's actually the the wheels on the front and back are kind of hover you know hover maglev kind of wheels so they don't really work but uh, there's wheels on the underside so it will actually roll um so that's kind of cool um uh, you know, if you dig the mini mates, we also did a Tron, a uh, Vinny mate version of uh, Tron Sora. I was hoping we would do a Vinny mate of Tron and Sark. Uh, I don't know if that's it's still in the works. We moved on to, we kind of moved on to Kingdom Hearts three at this point, the new game, because um, obviously there's a lot of, a lot of heat around that new game. It's going to come out early next year, and we're going to have uh, Vin, Vinny mates for it and um, and action figures for it. I don't know about mini mates for it. We'll have to see. You guys are just all ready and pumped and ready to go. Of course, <laughs> you guys are always the, I mean, I will, I always tell people because I don't know, the toy community can be strange sometimes. But we all kind of get googly eyed over certain things and sometimes we'll look other things by, but I, I really do enjoy everything Diamond Select. So I want you oh, guys to know that. Uh, uh, we have our, we have our hands in a lot of, uh, baskets i guess our eggs are in a lot of baskets so <laughs> it's it's hard for people to kind of pigeonhole us and say well this is a kind of company that does this kind of stuff because we do so many different kinds of things um but uh you know I, I i hope that people like you you know look at everything that we do and see that we're we're going for you know that we're fans and we're trying to do something that appeals to you know even if they're all different kinds of fans that we're trying to appeal to fans of the same things we do. Uh, well i couldn't agree with that more sentiment if i tried like um I just think that the line, any line, anything that you guys do, there's always something for everyone. It's, it, you guys are the melting pot, if you will, I think, for <laughs> collectors, because there's, a, there's something for everyone. Uh, if you don't like this, well, hey, we got this. And if, well, if you don't like this, oh, well, look at that over there. And I think if that's, this, uh, that's a really cool this, thing. If this were a commercial for Diamond Select Toys, which it is turning into, I would say uh, I would point out that our our uh, our motto is is um, our unofficial motto is the best of all worlds. You know, it's kind of a little braggadocious saying that we're the best, but you know, we 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 try to make stuff based on the coolest coolest things in all the different worlds of comics and TV and movies and and uh, but we also make all these different kinds of products. So. You know, we, we know that we're all over the place, but uh, but you know, it keeps us keeps us from getting bored. Well, it, you know, that's a dang fine commercial, if I say so myself. <laughs> uh, all joking aside, though, you you guys really do do a great job, and uh, you're easy on the wallet, and it's good quality. So I, I appreciate that you guys uh, care about collectors like myself and many others. So thank you guys for that. No, thank you. I'm a big fan of the work you do in your photography, so I look forward to seeing more of it. Well, I do appreciate that. I'm just, I'm just an average Joe, just taking pictures like anybody else. That's how I try to approach it. <laughs> um, it I, <laughs> but you know, thank you. I, it really does mean a lot. Like I said, I've, I followed you a lot through the years. Um, so you've kind of been there, like toy wise, like. There's certain people in the toy community. You got 
figurehead people or you just think that person's associated with this that and yeah, i mean you're one of those people so thank you it, it means a lot well thank you um so yeah folks um uh in closing, I just want to thank you for your time as always, Zach. And um, where can they follow you and all the great stuff from Diamond Select? That uh, on Twitter, uh, uh, Diamond Select is Collect DST, uh, and I am a, I'm a Zach Oat Z A C H O A T. Um, and uh, on Facebook, they've got a, we've got a Diamond Select Toys page, all one word. Um, and uh, we're also Collect DST on Instagram. Uh, and I'm on Instagram too at the uh, Z A C H O A T Zach Oat. Um, but I post all my all my DST photo photography is on uh, is on the Collect DST uh, pages. Um, and I uh, but I also put some more stuff on my website on my own personal pages. So, folks, that's going to do it for our interview with Zach over at Diamond Select Toys. Zach, a huge thank you for taking time out of your day to hang out with me and chat about all things toys that went down at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, I really appreciate everything that Diamond Select does. If you want to learn more about Diamond Select, I will have links in the description about where you can follow them on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and on the World Wide Web. That's right. And I, I think people hate it when you call it the World Wide Web, but I did, so deal with it. Uh, on a lighter note, I want to thank anyone who's listening to this. I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to what's going on over here at Crisis in the Toyverse and everything else that's with Undercover Capes. And speaking of Undercover Capes, for all things geekery, go check out UndercoverCapes.com today. They cover reviews for comics movies tvs collectibles hint hint and a plethora of other fine things go check them out undercovercapes.com uh while you're on the world wide web uh, you like any of the pop-ups that i've used in any of my reviews go do yourself a favor head over to extreme-sets.com they got some amazing pop-ups that you guys will enjoy and i say that because i love using them they are a friend of the show no doubt but at the end of the day they make a quality product that's sure to enhance any toy photography um speaking of toy photography Head over to Instagram if you get some free time. You could throw a follow at Toy Lover Crew, doing some amazing toy art. Some very talented people over there. We try to feature as many people in the toy community as we can, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. So go check that out. Also, speaking of checking things out, you can check out me on Instagram and Twitter by using the handles Bobo F and Mac. And uh, if you want to join me on Facebook, it's always Bobo Mac. But uh, guys, thank you so much. Send your feedback, both positive and negative. I will definitely take it all into consideration. Guys, take care. Thank you so much. And until next time, great googly boogly. <laughs>